Professor Orgelis here. We are exiting the slides and coming back to the code example. Make sure you save all your work. We're going to number six, CSS.html. Now in this example, you're going to see some content. And what we want to do is we want to use the CSS method to set and get the CSS properties from the HTML. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see I have a div with ID header, and then I have an H2. I have a div with content, the paragraph tag. Some of them have class quote. Some of them do not. And then at the bottom, I have a button. So if I scroll up, I have some pre-written code for us. You'll see even when I apply the CSS method, it still needs to be after the DOM has finished loading. If I don't wait for the DOM to finish loading, then this selector won't be there and I won't be able to select anything. So I'm going to uncomment these lines. What I'm doing is clicking on the line, clicking command forward slash or control forward slash to uncomment that line. So I can either select all the lines, comment them all, or I can select an individual line and comment that. So let's take a look at the first example. Here I'm selecting class quote. So I have a jQuery function, I'm selecting class quote. I'm using the CSS method, I'm going to change the font style to italic. If I scroll down, you'll see I have class quote on two paragraph tags. So I'm gonna zoom out on the page, and I'm going to refresh the page. You'll see that those two quotes are now italic. And let's look at what we did next. So here I can use multiple selectors, just like in CSS. If I look at CSS selectors and look for a comma, that's going to be an and. So I'm selecting the ID header and the ID content. Okay, so whenever I find these, so here is header, here is content. And you'll see I'm going to put a border of two pixels solid cornflower blue. So here you'll see I have my border on the header and my border on the paragraph tag. So what I'm doing here is I'm using jQuery to dynamically set the CSS after the page has finished loading. So at first you saw there were no borders. Now there is a border based off of using jQuery. Here you'll see I am selecting ID header and anything inside of that header that's an H2, I'm going to select. I'm going to then apply CSS. I'm going to do text align center. Here you'll see the H2 inside the header is centered. And here, let's say I'm trying to use multiple methods. So here I have the header ID. I'm using the CSS method. I'm gonna change the background color to beige and the margin bottom to 20 pixels. I actually had to write two lines of code here. I can shorten that up by doing this. So I can select the header once and I can actually call the CSS method twice. So here I can call the CSS method by changing the background color to beige. And I can call the CSS method again. Notice there's no semicolon after the first CSS method. I'm going to change the margin bottom to 20 pixels. However, at the last method call, I do need to place a semicolon. So I'm going to select the header. I'm going to run the CSS method twice. So if I refresh the page, you'll see I still have the background color and the margin. If I put this to 200, you'll see a big gap there. This is actually called chaining. And I can do that with other methods besides the CSS method. So here I'm calling the jQuery function and I'm going to select the document and I'm gonna call the ready function on it. I'm actually doing chaining here or in some of the previous examples where we had the text. So here I'm calling dot value and then dot length. That's a similar concept. I'm using the dot notation, but I can actually use the same method for the CSS method versus the other example had different methods. So here I'm chaining these method calls. We can also use a JavaScript object as we saw in the slides. So let's say I call the header selector where ID is equal to header and I'm going to use the CSS method, but this time I'm going to pass in an object. So you see I put the two brackets there, or the two mustaches, and then I'm going to separate them on a new line. The only difference between these two is this is a CSS property, whereas when I do an object here, 
I need to specify the CSS property in JavaScript. So if I want to change the background color, it's actually background color with a capital C because that's how I do it with JavaScript. I'll do a colon this time and then set it, let's say, to brown. And I'll do comma separated, key value pairs, and I'll do margin bottom, colon, let's say 50 pixels. The last one does not have a comma. We're going to talk about objects more in the next subsection. If I save this and refresh the page, you'll see the different styles take effect. So the gap is larger and the background color is more of a brown color. In this case, I am using a JavaScript object. Now, let's take some notes. So this section is crystal clear, and then we'll proceed to the next document ready. The first line of code, we were italicizing elements with class equal to quote. The second line, we were putting a border around both wrappers. The next line, we were centering the headers text. And then we were trying to make multiple changes. However, we can use chaining to make multiple changes, which would be a little bit shorter than this, or we can use a JavaScript object. Now, down below, you're gonna see the document ready function. And up here, I have a document ready function. In fact, you don't need two document ready functions. You only need one. So technically, I can put this button click in the document ready function up here. However, I want you to see there's multiple ways to write this document ready function. And I've talked about this a few times. That way you can remember it for an exam because this question will be on an exam. So here's the document ready function and here's the document ready function. I don't need to. I can put the click in this one or I can put all this code in this one. It would be the same. But I separate them because the functionality is going to be different. So here I'm looking for a button. If I scroll down, here's the button. And you'll see I didn't specify a click on it, but I did specify a click using jQuery. After they click on the button, I want to display an alert with the RGB values of the header. So here I can put an alert. And I'm going to put some text here. So background color is equal to, I'm going to concatenate that with the jQuery selector. So I'm going to select the header. I'm going to use the CSS method. And instead of specifying two values, I'm just going to specify one. And if I don't use a JavaScript object, I can actually specify the CSS property, which is background dash color. Here you'll see I've only specified one parameter, which in this case will get the value instead of set the value. So if I refresh the page, click on the button, you'll see an alert appear with the RGB values for the header's background color. So the CSS method is very powerful. I can use it to get and set CSS properties. I can also set multiple properties depending on whether I want to chain or whether I want to use a JavaScript object. But what's a JavaScript object? We haven't talked about that. Stick with Professor Wergley's and I'll explain what a JavaScript object is in the next video.